Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and in this video, this is the second video of our React 2021 course and where we last left off, okay, where we last left off I had built these buttons, so these buttons here. The problem with, and the cool thing about them is I can use them multiple times but they're not very customizable. What would really be cool if I could pass it information, like let's say I did this, if I could tell it color and then I could be like, the color is blue. And this one, the color is orange. Okay, and kind of, because you can kind of do this in HTML, you can pass what were called attributes in HTML. It'd be nice to be able to do that with this JSX, right? So I can sit there and be like, this one color is green. Now the cool thing is that the answer is yes, you can do this. What happens is that JSX, whenever you pass data like this, so inside the call to the component, because again, anytime you call the component, you're creating an instance of that, what that component does. So these are three individual buttons, and I can pass each button some information by through this sort of key value pair way of, that I'm doing here, okay? Which is pretty cool. But notice, nothing's happening yet, because it doesn't know what color means. It just knows that I'm passing it. Now, in Chrome, you can download what's called the React DevTools. And then once you install that extension, you get this little like new thing here called Components. And now I can see all the components and how they relate to each other in my Chrome DevTools. But if I look at the button, I can see that each of these buttons, let me actually refresh the page. Okay, oh, the server's not running. That would make a difference. NPM start. So let me close these tabs. Okay, now if I open up those dev tools, I go to components here and I click on the buttons. Notice that there's a section called props. And the color, this one's color is blue, this one's color is orange. So it is receiving that information. And what is this props thing? Props is like attributes in HTML. So you would pass attributes in HTML. In JSX, you pass props. And then it's basically short for properties, kind of like there's many properties in an object. Because any props that I add, like if I just added anything arbitrarily, like cheese equals Gouda, it'll show up here. So like now, if I look at this one, see this one has two props, this one has one prop, but whatever properties are being passed in this fashion, okay, and again, it doesn't even have to be a string. I could pass an array. So I could say this cheese, so I use curly brackets, and I'll say this cheese uh, prop is actually gonna be an array of Gouda and Munster. Okay, and I'm missing a quotation mark here. I know we should be good. But now if I look at this, see, cheese is Gouda and Monster, and the color prop is blue. So I can send as many props as I want with whatever names that I want, and they can be any value that I want. I can send JSX down. I can send arrays, objects. I can send literally anything down. Okay, anything that you can save in a variable, you could send down as a prop, because it just gets packed into an object and that object gets passed into the function. So literally this function is being called and when this function is called by React, it passes whatever props as an object as, as an argument to the function. So all I have to do is declare a parameter to receive those props. Okay, so just by declaring props as a parameter, you've now received that object. Okay, so if I were to do right here and I just do a console.log of, of props, and then I go back to my console here. I'm gonna see these three console logs from the three buttons and see the first one's props are blue and cheese, the second one's orange, the second one's green. So I have access to this object. So that's all props is. Whenever you're using a component, you can specify properties like so. Okay. Specify properties like so. And then those get packaged as an object that gets passed as an argument to that function that you use to build the component. So now I could actually use it. So now for the background color, I could switch this out. And instead of using this hard-coded blue, I can refer to that props object and be like props.color. And now it's gonna use whatever color the props is. And see now all three buttons have changed colors. Okay, and let's say, let's pretend this is gonna, we change the button and we say there's a prop called text. So prop dot, props dot text. And see here, I'm still in HTML mode. So that's why I had to use the curly brackets. But in here, I didn't need to use the curly brackets because technically I was already inside of curly brackets here. 
Okay, once you're inside of a set, once you've been escaped, you can just write JavaScript like normal. But when you're in not in an escaped area, you got to escape using the curly brackets. Okay, so right now there's no text on the buttons because I replaced it with this props.txt. None of them are receiving a prop called text, but I can just easily add that. So I can now just be like, let me get rid of this cheese prop. But I could be like cheese, I could be like text equals one. Text, so kind of close that quotation mark. Text equals two. And text equals three. Cool, and now see, I have three different colored buttons and I didn't have to really do all that styling over again. And that's the beauty of components. I can create reusable chunks of my website and the things that might change from every time I use the button, I just make them props. I can just design them, design the components to receive a prop for those dynamic pieces. But the things that I want all the time, like maybe I want the buttons to be this shape with this, you know, with, with this uh, font weight and whatnot. Let me just make it a little bit prettier. So let's do like a border radius of let's say 30 pixels. Okay, and then let's get rid of that border. Border, none. Okay, and see like those look a lot better. Okay, and now I got these like cool buttons that I can just use over and over again. I can, I can change the color every time, I can change the text every time. Um, that's sort of the beauty of React. Okay, and again, you can pass anything as props. So I can go pass a function. Okay, so for example, let's you know write a function. So I'll just, and actually, I, again, you can define things. You don't just have to return value. Like again, anything between at before the return value, you can write any functions you want. You can do literally whatever you want before that return value. Because again, these are just functions. They're just functions that are running and then React is rendering the JSX that it returns. But anything else goes. So anything you could normally do in JavaScript goes. Okay, so I can create a variable. So I'll just say const a func and say equals, um, and I'll just write a function that console logs. Hello. Console.log. Actually, I'll just make it say a func, so we know it's the a func console log. Okay, and then I can pass it as a prop. So I'll say prop dot func or prop or not prop dot func func equals a func, and then I'll just add this prop to all three buttons, so that way I don't cause any errors in a second. So now all of them are receiving this function as a prop. And now in the button, if I'm aware that I'm going to receive that prop, again, you have to, like any function, you have to know you're receiving those arguments. Like you have to anticipate the arguments you're receiving. You can't just define arbitrary arguments and never use them. That would kind of win the point. But I can now do like a console log props and I'll console log the result of props.func. Okay, so let's take a look at those console logs. Okay, and let me just refresh this page to make this console a little bit easier to read. But you see here what it does. See, it console logs a func. Okay, well, actually, the first time saying it's undefined. Oh, yeah, because it doesn't return anything. The function doesn't return anything. Um, so I let me do this. Let's cut that out of there. And you can see here, like, a func runs, console logs a func. But again, where am I calling it? Inside the component via props because the function got passed in. So the point is you can pa literally pass in anything via props, anything you want to give the child component because that's the terminology. So all of so app is the parent and then all of these are children of app and then I can have more components inside those components and whatnot. But the parent can always pass props down to the child to pass information down. And I can always inspect to see, hey, am I getting that data using dev tools? Okay, other cool things you could do. Okay, let me just get rid of all this function stuff. So actually I'll just do it this way to make it quicker. Doot, doot. And then I'm gonna go get rid of the function here. So that way, it's right now it's about to throw me an error saying it's not a function. And what I could do instead 
is let's say I were to create like a fun a variable called button one props. So instead, what I do is I create an object that says color blue text. This time it'll be four. So it's the same props that I'm passing in, but it's an I'm defining it as a separate variable with an object. What I can then do is let's I, I'll go over here and I'll remove this. I can use the curly brackets and then spread that button one props. Spread that in there and see it works just the same. Because what this does, it'll take each individual property of the object, spread them out, and pass them as a prop. And works the same way as if I had just typed those props individually. So that's a good way of like sometimes passing a lot of props without making this thing look get really inflated. You can package them as an object somewhere else and then spread that object into the tag. So that way it's a little bit more condensed. Okay, so that's a, always a neat trick with props. Um, other cool thing you can do is there's another prop that's automatically in every component. So you don't have to like, you don't have to pass this in by saying like children equals, but there's a prop built in called children. So in this case, instead of using text, let me use children. So props dot children. Now the way this prop works, so now notice these, the yellow button and the green button, they've all lost text. I'm going to go to the first button, so I'm going to go to this first button, but instead of closing it right away with a slash, and, and that's another thing about JSX, every tag has a close, so image tags, you always need that slash at the end, There's, you can't leave an open tag. But let's say I open this up, I get rid of the slash, then I would need a closing tag, button. Anything I put between the opening and closing tag gets wrapped up in its own prop called children. So if I write cheese here. See, now the button's going to say cheese, because what did I do here? I said props.children is what shows up on the button. And again, if I take a look over here in my in my dev tools, you'll see that we're receiving a children prop. OK, there's a children prop. OK, that is, oops, I copied over the text there. But there's a children prop that equals cheese, and that's being injected right here. OK, so that is another really cool thing you can do. And anything can be passed down as a, a prop, as a child. Okay, so like for example, if I were to do this and then do like a curly bracket with a function, now this is kind of getting advanced and weird React. But now, let's, now look, now children is an array because there's like an, there's the string and then there's the function. So really what I would want is like, I would want to show props.children one zero here. And then I would fix it. Let's refresh. Uh, Props.children zero. Oh, because the other two don't have props. Dot children. Let's see here. Yeah, it'll still work. It just won't recognize that second prop um, in there. But you can do some pretty cool stuff. Okay, with that, because that that's how some libraries work, where you'll pass like a function as props that can illustrate what is going to end up being there. Um, so, but what is props at the end of the day? It's just a way for the parent component to send data to the child component. That allows us to make the components more dynamic and flexible. So we can custom have them do really cool custom things like custom styling without having to necessarily rebuild the whole piece of UI over again. So again, going back to this button, most of the styles are going to be the same, but I can change the color because I set it up that that's determined through a prop. So basically, you just think of a component. You think of, OK, this is what's always the same that you put in the component's definition. And then you think about what are the things that can change, and those things get passed in as props. And then that's generally like how you'll construct a component. OK, so that's the story of props. So let me commit this code. So I'm going to use my little special script that I made to make this real easy, props origin props okay and again that'll be visible online where the the code from this lesson will be um, that'll be in the video description and what I'm gonna do is make the branch for the next lesson so git checkout dash B and what I want to do next we're gonna cover state okay so next will be state um, and I'll see you guys there and again, 
if you want to stay in touch, head over to devnursery.com. Actually, I have it open over here, devnursery.com, and join the Slack and Discord community. I'm always on, so you can message me anytime with anything you think. Also, you'll find lots of cool tutorials here at devnurse.com on anything you'd like to kind of dabble in. Okay, I like to dabble. And I've made videos so you can dabble. So let's dabble. I'll see y'all later.